Here we're still on the kitchen countertop. We're gonna keep moving down the countertop. Again, I'm using my non-contact voltage detector to make sure that the work is dead. That beep you heard was simply indicating that the detector was still awake. It has an auto shut off after a few minutes. I'm pulling out my number 12 Romex cable with three conductors, hot, neutral, and ground. I'm stripping to about 7 eighths of an inch. I'm putting that twist on the end for wrapping around the screws. Again, I'm really, really big on the good quality connection. I'm gonna strip that back just a little bit more. I never wanna have any of my insulation underneath the terminal of the screw, ever, ever, ever. And um, on the flip side of that, moderation is king. I don't wanna have, I do not wanna have an extensive amount of conductor, exposed conductor protruding um, that's been stripped from the back of the device. That's just room for that grounding conductor to make contact and for us to have a trip circuit. I'm wrapping in a clockwise direction. I'm making, I'm actually, I'm actually pulling on the device just a little bit to make sure that the conductor is firmly seated in that terminal screw. Snug. Again, just a little bit of pressure. This doesn't work if all your wires are not about the same length. So I wanna keep them all the same length. I wanna have at least three inches, which I do here, of wire protruding from the face of the box. I'm tightening down my unused terminal screw. That just helps um, keep it compact and again, slightly helps prevent accidental contact. I'm folding my wires back into the box. That's a gentle fold. I'm never cramming, never stuffing. Now one thing, we're gonna encounter here is we actually have an adjustable box. At some point, this being a backsplash, it could be tiled. And this adjustable box will remain um, permanently adjustable. But the drywall mud has covered over my box. So if I simply back out my box, I risk explosion of that drywall and some, some damage. So I'm gonna use my DeWalt oscillator. It's got a um, blade end, many of you have seen this tool, with three degrees of oscillation back and forth. I'm gonna carefully um, cut out that box. The other thing I wanna call attention to here before I do that is I've got a hammer hook on my tool belt and I need to watch out that only soft surfaces touch this appliance. This appliance is already in place. That's not my preferred method on a construction project. I wanna get the rough work done. Appliances and countertops last. But in a case like this, I, I, I never want to allow anything metallic to touch the face of this appliance. And if the countertops were in, I would never put anything metal on those countertops, even if they're not scratched or damaged, chipped or nicked in any way. If they are, it's hugely expensive. And if they're not, then the homeowner, the general contractor, anybody who sees me putting a, a metal tool on their brand new countertops is going to be suspect of the care that I'm taking. And if there is damage, it could circle back around to me even if I'm not the one to damage them. Um, I was on a job site the other day and the countertops, the granite countertops, were mined off a river bottom in Brazil. The river was dammed, the granite was cut out, and the countertops are here in Indiana. So really have to take care. That's 100 bucks a square foot. So I'm, I'm intentionally lifting my pouch out of the way. I'm not putting any pressure on the face of this appliance. I've braced my hand on the wall so that I've got good control of the tool. get my device out of the way. There, drywall is non-combustible, but I don't really wanna have an excessive amount of drywall inside my box. Every electrical box is a fire rated enclosure. And so I wanna avoid a couple of things. I wanna avoid having wood chips or anything that's combustible. I wanna avoid having any type of foreign object. I wanna avoid unnecessary knockouts and openings in my box. The box should not be drilled or cut abnormally. And if there is a large opening that does not have a wire through it, then I'm gonna use firecock to seal that hole as part of retaining the fire enclosure of that box. 
Now I'm using my Phillips screwdriver to back this box out of the wall until I'm flush. I like that positioning there. I'm gonna proceed by folding my wires into the wall. Number one square drive. Typically, um, the screw holes will be covered by drywall, and typically that's not an issue. The, the drywall mud doesn't impede the screw much at all. And that's a plastic threaded, in the case of this Carlon box, that's a plastic threaded shaft, and so I'm not gonna be able to put the death grip on it. It's, it's again, just snug. I'm gonna make sure my device is vertical. That plate does have a little bit of give in the final installation. And I actually don't like how that's seating at the top. So I'm gonna tighten with my Phillips screwdriver, tighten this down just a little bit until it's seated the way I want it. Here's my plate. screw in the horizontal position. Don't over tighten the screw. These are technically unbreakable plates, but they can still be broken. Come on. All right, next we're gonna move down the wall and we're gonna be installing a couple single pole switches. Those are single location switches, more GFCIs and uh, multi-gang switch boxes, as well as a fixture over the future kitchen sink. <laughs> 